Uh, so, uh, kind of a brief update for, for you all. Uh, last night, the legislature uh, adjourned signing die. Um, the first time that they have adjourned on time since uh, 2014. Um, so the, the past several years, they've always gone to special sessions, um, uh, basically to negotiate a budget deal. Uh, in, in the long years, the long sessions, it's, uh, they put together the operating budget and then this uh, was a short session. And so they're kind of fine tuning the operating budget. It's called the supplemental budget. And they do that for the operating budget, the transportation budget, the capital budget, um, and then you know other policies that they pass. So yeah, that was a, a, you know, kind of a neat thing to be, you know, be around to see them actually uh, uh, have a signy die celebration, I guess, um, uh, to you know to actually celebrate the end of the the legislative session. The past few years, they've just it's kind of gone out on a whimper, and and not many people have been around. It's you know kind of more of a uh, uh, procedural thing. Um, so yeah, uh, House Bill fifteen thirteen. Uh, I've been emailing with your uh, teacher, and uh, that passed. Um, Again, on a fairly partisan manner, uh, I don't recall the, uh, the exact uh, vote count, but I believe it, in the Senate it was, uh, what was it, 27, 22, if I recall correctly. So picked up a, a couple of Republicans on, on the Senate floor, um, but uh, I don't know, I, I know I sent uh, you all the video clips um, earlier, that, or just the other day, it was either Wednesday night, uh, so I don't know if you've had time to to watch them yet, um, but you know, kind of from my uh, viewpoint, uh, kind of disappointing that uh, that is again a kind of a partisan battle on the floor and, and partisan arguments that were being made. Yeah, we watched the debate yesterday. In class, okay. And we thought, thought we thought it was really interesting. Like we, we enjoyed watching it. <laughs> I, we we watched a lot of Erickson's. Uh, comments and a couple of the others. Uh, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> beyond being interesting, what what all did you think about it? I feel like we kind of felt a lot of people didn't really, <clears throat> a lot of people didn't really like understand the bill itself. Like Erickson didn't realize it was only like 17, 18, 18 year olds for the most part. And I feel like we've kind of noticed that in a lot of the debates and it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of funny just how people don't really like understand exactly like what the bill says or like provisions in the bill. Mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, Doug Erickson is a uh, very, uh, I'd, I'd say eloquent on the, on his floor speeches. You know, he's, uh, he can get riled up uh, pretty well and, and, you know, and make, uh, make his point, whatever his point may be uh, uh, in, in a very strong manner. Um, you know, I was, uh, you know, kind of sadly chuckling to myself about his uh, illegal alien voting uh, act, um, which, yeah, I mean, he, you all have read the bill, you you understand, you know, the, what the bill does and, and, you know, how it can be effective, so it's, it's definitely interesting. Um, I, I, you know, I guess a question for me is, you know, kind of, uh, I, my my time with you all is uh, uh, winding down, but um, you know, as you go and uh, I imagine many of you, this will be your first time, uh, you know, formally being eligible to vote coming up uh, in the fall election. And I mean, how how does that, you know, knowing and, and working with your legislators, how does that uh, impact your decisions or uh, or you know? Uh, when you will eventually get your ballots in, in August and in November. I think that we all like, it's a little bit different. Like you kind of hear like, oh, this person's Republican or Democrat, but it was interesting to see like the people like firsthand, like how they act and like, kind of like, I think we were all surprised by certain people. <laughs> um, but I think like, it was good to see like, that they're just kind of like normal average people also, like they're not that, high above you or like out of reach like but you can definitely tell like they're different kind of quirks or like things you like or don't like mm -hmm. definitely I'd, I'd agree with that you know the the other thing that kind of blew me away when i started uh you know uh lobbying for the state council of firefighters i mean i've 
I've, I've told you this before. I'm, you know, I, I was just a firefighter before and, you know, just, but, um, I, you know, coming into this process, I really had no clue about the intricacies of it. And, um, it was very interesting to me that, you know, for the most part, people continue to, you know, they continue to elect the same representatives and senators. And, you know, this is on all levels of government, uh, but then, you know, are, are really upset about, you know, the status quo of, you know, you look at Congress, you look at the state legislature and, you know, they're unhappy with Congress, but, you know, what, what actually happens in, in their districts. And it's like, well, we really like our member of Congress or our representative or our senator, but we, we dislike what, you know, the, uh, the legislature or Congress is doing. And so it's kind of a, you know, interesting take to, you know, be frustrated with something that's going on and, you know, in a larger scope of things, but then, you know, be happy with your, uh, legislators and and I think one big thing that I've learned throughout you know my six years of this is uh, you know while you may support uh, your representative your senator your member of Congress um, you know who do who do they ultimately support as far as when it comes to their leadership because the leadership is of of the Senate of the House uh, in a lot of ways determines the agenda and what issues will go forward and what issues don't go forward. I mean, I've, I've personally experienced that with some of our firefighter issues that, uh, you know, looking at expanding uh, workplace protections, well, that hasn't been, you know, a very popular uh, Republican ideal over the past years. Um, and so their leadership didn't want to move my bills forward, but then, you know, we get a flip in leadership in the Senate and then my bills do move forward and they pass with, you know, unanimous or near unanimous uh, votes. And so it's, it's just, I'm continually like learning about this process and it's interesting to see the different dynamics of, you know, well, yeah, this one person may support your issue, may believe in your issue, but when it, like, who are they supporting? Do, is who, who do they support, uh, uh, do they support the issues that you care about? So. Sorry, kind of a long roundabout just kind of conversation here but uh yeah those like committee seeing the, the role of committee chair and whether or not if the chair doesn't support it it's not going anywhere mm -hmm. right? yeah that the the power that the chair of of a committee of uh the leadership is actually you know quite uh quite uh i guess it's surprising to, to I, I think, the average person that doesn't know the legislative process. Yeah. Did anybody want to say anything else about like what, about what you watched seeing Erickson speak or any take on what you saw in that debate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so we, uh, we heard that you were um, really busy with some of your firefighter legislation. So we were like wondering what that was all about. Yeah. So um, it's been an interesting couple weeks for, uh, for the firefighters. Um, so uh, we have uh, the bill that looked to uh, presume certain cancers are because of our workplace. Uh, uh, had some very unique twists and turns. So typically, um, when a bill comes up before a committee or uh, on the House floor or Senate floor, um, the bill is going to pass, right? They, you know, you never ever see a bill voted down. And the rare occasion that you do, it might be to make a political statement. You know, so uh, last year, um, Senate Republicans brought up uh, I believe is the carbon tax on the Senate floor and they wanted to, you know, say, Hey, this, this tax bill doesn't have the votes and we're going to, you know, we're going to make a point of like, uh, voting it down. Um, so that, you know, they, they did that as kind of a, you know, a political maneuver. Um, my bill, uh, was passed by the Senate. It passed 46 to one and then came over to the house. It passed out of the house labor and workplace standards committee, uh, on a partisan vote, four to two. Um, there, the one Republican that had previously supported it uh, wasn't um, in the committee that day. She was excused. I don't know why, why she wasn't there, but she didn't vote on it. So it came out partisan, and then it went over to the House Appropriations Committee, where I was working with uh, a variety of House members. 
And the House Appropriations Committee had previously voted this bill out, um, you know, in, in actually a greater uh, greater amount of coverage. The, the bill that they had voted out previously had uh, more cancer supported, um, and and so they, I'm, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, I believe the vote was uh, 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 21 yes votes, and so there's 18 Democrats on the committee, so we had picked up three Republicans uh, the previous time. Uh, Fast forward to uh, Saturday, or I'm sorry, uh, Monday of fiscal committee cutoff, and they're voting on the bill, and um, we ended up losing three Democrats, and uh, we lost two Republicans on the bill, and it was brought up in in the committee and and voted down, which um, you know it they weren't doing it to make a political point, they thought that they uh, that the chair thought that there were the votes to pass this bill. And then um, it ended up failing, and uh, Republicans that you know the, the three Republicans that had previously supported the bill, one of them supported it, but then the other two um, de uh, decided to not, and it uh, it basically was to kind of um, you know frankly thumb their nose at the majority. Uh, it you know kind of embarrassed them uh, the the. Uh, chair in, in a sense and so that way they could gain more uh, negotiating leverage when it came to budget time and so they publicly killed my bill um which you know which was uh everybody in the room was kind of uh, blown away that that actually happened uh, you know and on a bill that deals with firefighters with cancer i mean it's you know that's from a pr perspective uh voting down a bill that protects firefighters with cancer is kind of you know kind of a, a surprising thing um so we were kind of you know frankly devastated about that uh i've been working on that bill in some form since 2015 and um then we uh some people were were pretty angry about it in in the uh, democratic party that the three democrats uh voted against it publicly and they, you know they could do a, a procedural motion it's called a, a uh, reconsidering basically so the people that voted uh, on the prevailing sides so of voting you know voting on the winning side can make a motion to reconsider the bill immediately or, or uh, you know a little bit later and they chose not to and so there you know there was uh, uh, some frustration within the House Democratic caucus there um, so uh, a couple days later we were able to pull off a Hail Mary and uh, we had the we uh, the leadership of the House Democrats um, pulled the bill from the committee without a vote. It's kind of a rare procedural. I, mean, I, I wouldn't say rare, but um, you know it doesn't happen too often, I guess. Uh, procedural motion that that took the bill out of the committee without you know without a recommendation um, and was going to be voted on on uh, the House floor and then. Um, you know, then we ran into some other issues, and then ultimately ended up dying. Uh, so it was it was a, kind of a, an emotional roller coaster, and and uh, lots of ups and downs with with that bill. Um, so yeah, so it was, it was a, kind of a hectic time trying to manage all that. And I was out communicating with the, uh, my membership, and you know, trying to get them to contact their legislators, and trying to work with a number of legislators on on getting. Uh, the bill in some acceptable form, but unfortunately, uh, this just wasn't the year. Um, so that was a, you know, kind of a little for, you know, on a personal level, a kind of a heartbreaking loss for me, but at the same time, we were very, our agenda uh, was very successful. We had some very big wins in other areas and, and uh, we, we moved a number of bills through the legislative process. So, so that was kind of the hecticness of it. You said it passed 46 to one in the Senate? Yes, um, and and the Senate had previously uh, uh, not voted on this bill in, in years past. Um, you know, again, going back to that leadership decision of, of the committee chair uh, that the bill was was referred to, the committee chair uh, didn't believe in the bill previously, and so he wouldn't you know he wouldn't move it forward. So, comment for something to pass that strongly and one chamber and then come over to the other and not make it through yeah i mean it, you know it, it kind of depends on the uh uh the issue sometimes um bills will pass out and they just run out of time 
um, you know, that uh, there's only so much time to be able to pass bills. That, that I don't believe that was the case with uh, my presumptive uh, uh, disease bill. But um, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of bills that uh, will get caught up and, you know, they may have unanimous support, but they just don't have the political firepower, I guess, to really make a difference. Um, there's bills that will, uh, you know, it's, it's coming up on election season here. I mean, uh, yesterday they adjourned and today they're going, you know, going into campaign mode. Um, and so they'll, you know, they're, they're going to be working towards that. And, you know, if, if the, if kind of a concept of the bill is going to pass, well, you know, what kind of vote can I take to, uh, potentially, uh, you know, get support on, on whatever issue it may be. So, um, and, you know, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, people want firefighter uh, support for their, you know, for their campaigns. We're a very trusted name out in the community. I mean, we obviously come in, in, into people's homes and uh, so uh, legislators and candidates really value our support. And so, um, you know, that's, I think that's why it passed with such a strong bipartisan manner in, in the Senate. And unfortunately, uh, it, you know, I think it got real for, uh, some legislators in the House and, and, you know, they were facing some, you know, some pushback from, uh, you know, from, uh, from their local governments. So that was the biggest concern was local government costs. So, so yeah, that's kind of, kind of the, uh, the roller coaster with my, with my bill. We have any other comments, thoughts? Uh, Oh, do we? Do you know anything about when the bill signing might be yet? I don't know. Um, so the uh, since the bill was delivered after or within five days of the end of the legislative session, the governor has up to twenty days to sign the bill. And I don't know if that includes the day that uh, um, uh, that in, that the bill was delivered, and that doesn't include Sunday. So the, the clock is ticking. It's going to be sometime within the next, you know. Uh, 14 or 15 days. I, I, I don't recall off the top of my head when the bill was specifically delivered, but uh, it should be soon. Um, and then I, I don't remember, I'd have to go back and look. I don't believe that there was any special enactment clause on, on the bill. So there's three different ways a bill can be enacted. Um, the typical uh, way a bill is enacted is, is upon signature of the governor, uh, it's enacted within, you know, 90 days after uh, it's signed into law. Uh, the bill may specify a date that that uh, it will be enacted. So, for example, the you know the budget bills are typically enacted on July one, um, and then the uh, um, uh, um, you can also have an emergency clause. And uh, if it's got an emergency clause, it's enacted immediately. So. This one just says the act takes effect July 1st, 2019. Okay, there you go. So, so next year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a whole nother year. And, and David's helping me out here and, and bringing up the bill. So it was, it was delivered on March 6th. So, um, you know, 20 days, you know, so uh, and not including Sundays. And so that's, what, about three, you know, three weeks away, roughly. So um, I'm, I'm going to follow up with uh, Representative Berkowitz and see if uh, he has any further indication on when the bill will be signed, where it will be signed, if it will be here at the Capitol or, or uh, where else. I know that the governor is going to be doing some uh, touring around and, and signing bills in a variety of different places. The, uh, the bill that I was working on for post-traumatic stress disorder for firefighters and cops is uh, uh, going to be signed up at Harborview Medical Center in Seattle. So. Uh, um, there's a number of bills uh, uh, that are affecting the labor community that will be signed that day. So, do you know how much lead time you usually get? Like, do we, would we possibly know two to three days in advance? Or? I I think uh, uh, for this bill, we'll we'll probably know at least two to three days in advance. I mean, this is uh, you know as we talked about before, this is part of their larger voting uh, access package, and so they're you know I I think uh, the governor and and House and Senate Democrats are going to be touting this as a, you know, a long time coming achievement. Um, they've been, you know, they've been working on these bills since I've, I've been lobbying. And so uh, 
um, you know, they, they, I think this is a, a big deal for them. And, and uh, so they'll want to get some press out for it and get, you know, get a bunch of people, as many people there for the bill signing as possible. So I, th I you know, short answer is yes, I think we'll have a, a decent lead time. So, um, but, so since the se session's ending for you, like what's kind of the next step for you and like what you do with like your job and all that? So I, uh, you know, I, I'm in a unique role uh, because I'm still an active firefighter. So I got a couple days of vacation uh, posted and gonna go snowboarding. But uh, uh, after that, I'm back at the firehouse full time. Um, and so on, on my days off from the firehouse, I, uh, I'll do mostly political work. I'll have some uh, kind of interim work on, on trying to get uh, uh, my bills kind of set up for the next legislative session. Um, the legislature, uh, the you know, the committees of the legislature will meet in in what we call the interim in between uh, the sessions, and uh, they'll do work sessions. And so it's kind of like a longer discussion or dialogue on a certain issue. And so I think my my presumptive cancer bill may be a part of that um, as far as a, a interim work session. Um, they'll also, they'll have committee days in November. Um, and so the, the, you know, the house and Senate will get together and, and have committee meetings for a couple of days. It's kind of like a legislative preview. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of the, the main work. Uh, but really like, uh, for my, for what I do for the state council of firefighters is we kind of switch into campaign role now. So, uh, we'll be engaged in elections and, and trying to get, people uh, that support firefighters elected. So um, that's, you know, that can't be said for, for every lobbyist out there. A, a lot of lobbyists just, you know, they, they don't do any political work. They just kind of, you know, take the interim off or, or you know, have, I mean, they'll, they'll be traveling across the state getting support on their issues and, and uh, you know, it's kind of a, a different, uh, I mean, my shop at the state council of firefighters is, is a small shop where you know there's two lobbyists we have four staff members and and we have a lot of other services that we offer for our members and so uh you know our ability to get a lot of that stuff done during the interim is limited especially when we're still a served active fire firefighter so one thing we we noticed in the um with uh Senator Erickson's comments that I just kind of wondered how prevalent you've seen this or not. But uh, one of the things that the student said is that Sim felt like he didn't know the bill. Like um, when he was on the floor, he's talked about 16 year olds being kind of peer pressured into voting. Mm -hmm. And it's all about the 16 year olds are going to be, vote, you know, registering in their classes. But the bill says that it's only going to be done in senior social studies classes, mm -hmm. which means it's only going to be 17, 18 year olds, not these 16 year old children that he was concerned about. Um, and it felt weird. Like, I mean, and a couple of the other people kept mentioning these 16 year olds signing up in their class. I was like, that's not in the bill. It's not there. It's the 16 year old can get it when they get their driver's license. Mm -hmm. But it's not like this this teacher is walking around with driver's license plates, <laughs> getting them all signed up. It it would have been in the senior social studies, and, and most of those students would be voting in the next in the fall. Mm -hmm. But so, it's not like, is that common that they that people vote on stuff and talk about stuff that is like inaccurate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, I. I can't speak to uh, Senator Erickson's specific <laughs> understanding of the bill, but uh, you know, the, uh, there's a there's a couple different mind you know uh, thought processes I have here. Is one, they could have, and my guess is they have, uh, you know, they put together messaging on this specific bill because this is kind of a hot topic. They, you know, the the debate lasted on the Senate floor roughly, you know, 50 minutes, and so, you know, they were they were fairly well prepped for what they needed to say on this bill uh, on the Senate floor. Um, so they have uh, caucus staff that, you know, will research this stuff, prepare messaging points. And so that was probably a messaging point that, that was put out there, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, they, they have that. Um, so, uh, you know, on the other side of things, you know, the volume of bills that come through the legislative process, and especially this year, the number of bills that were introduced, 
heard, uh, passed out of committee, passed off the floors. I mean, it uh, was quite significant compared to previous legislative sessions. And so, you know, you could also make an argument, well, you know, that in some cases, these are very complex, as complex pieces of legislation. And, you know, going back to like my, my firefighter cancer bill, workers' compensation, workplace injury stuff is a, is a very complicated topic that, you know, it's taken me a number of years just to get a very basic understanding and, and you know, legislators for the most part don't understand a lot of a lot of this stuff, but they're voting on it, they're making decisions, they're relying on experts, both within their caucus, within their committees, and their ad and the advocates to uh, uh, educate and inform them on the bill. And, you know, so it could be a volume issue, you know, um, a complexity issue, uh, just not being familiar with the issue too. Um, and so, yeah, I, I've, you know, from my experience uh, on, a, you know, both my bills and, and watching other bills take place, I've, I've seen a variety of uh, misinformation on in debates and, and on the floors um, and you know it, it could be attributed to you know to volume to complexity or it also could be contributed to a coordinated messaging uh, campaign to try and defeat or um, you know or argue against a, a, a bill um, you know the other thing is there's uh, you know the uh, I mean there's a bunch of legislative sayings of course um, about you know, kind of the nature of things, uh, uh, and and there's a concept that minorities talk and majorities vote. So, um, you know, the the minorities, if they have, you know, the minority uh, parties, if they have an issue with a bill, you know, they're going to message it. They're going to, uh, you know, basically build campaign fodder um, to use, you know, in the upcoming elections and like see this, like, uh, my my district. Uh, the people that I represent don't support this issue. And here's what I did to fight back against this, you know, uh, this stuff. Um, and, and so in a lot of ways, they, you know, that might be their intent or their purpose uh, for messaging. I mean, I'll, uh, again, I can't speak to Senator Erickson's specific, you know, knowledge of the bill, but uh, um, yeah, there's, there's a variety of reasons why there may be misinformation out there. Okay, well, our bell is gonna ring in a minute. Okay. So we'll still be in touch a little bit, but um, yeah. All right, thank you for all the. Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed working with you guys. It's been fun for me, and uh, um, you're, you know, Mr. Lawrence has my email. If if any of you have any questions going forward, I'm I'm available for you. And I mean, even you know, even after high school, if you you know, if you're curious about the political process or anything like that, I'm happy to uh, you know. May may take me a, a, a day or two to get back to you, but uh, I'm happy to respond back to you. So, cool. all right. Thank you very much. All right. Take care.